My name is Claire Opheim. I'm a senior at Bennington High School. <laughs> and my poem is titled Mutated Breasts. I feel beautiful. My brilliant blue dress shimmers around me. But my beauty fades with a fatal phone call. I prayed for a day when she would be okay, but clearly that day would never come. Because as I rip the door open, I see my dad trying to block the brokenness I was about to feel. Her motionless body laid there in the next room. Part of it was visible to me. I saw the tears stream from the sheriff's eyes and I knew what was happening. I collapsed from the sorrow of my mind, trying to find the happiness that was leaving me behind. Her puzzle tumbled to the ground as I knelt down to plead for her soul. Why, God? I hadn't missed a day to pray, and yet she still had to go for her own healing. I know but what ended in my broken soul. And I still wore that brilliant blue dress. But how can I live when a part of me has died? She was my Harry Potter, my accidental horcrux. A piece of my soul has left me. And I'm sorry, Mom, I couldn't touch your cold body in that cold casket with cold tears on everyone's faces. Your lips were blue and not yours. Nothing on your body felt like yours without the soul to sit inside, so I shivered in fear. I cried, not because of a goodbye, but more of a where did you go? I hadn't been able to find you for the last month, let alone as your skin is decomposing, holding this grayish hue that makes me want to throw myself onto the ground and break down at the sight of your empty corpse. But you were decomposing by New Year's. The tumors were rumored to grow all over from the back you couldn't lean on, to the legs you couldn't stand on, to the lungs you couldn't rely on. A bag of oxygen wasn't going to keep the cancer from eating a third of your left lung. Your legs like little toothpicks ready to snap at the push of too much pressure. And I wasn't there to hold your shaky walk and be your life support. I left you to fade into that chair. And fade you did. Your voice became nothing but rasps of struggling air. Less and less of it I heard. But now I can't shake you because every time I wake, you linger in the lights and bright shiny ornaments you and I picked out. And I learned that God doesn't will bad things, but allows them to happen for the greater good of our freedom. But how come it had to be with her? I would rather face the pain of a hundred heartbreaks if it meant my heart wouldn't have shattered onto that carpet floor. But questions lead to more questions. Are the cancerous tumors mutating my breasts to act like poison? Will I be murdered like my mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother before me? Will I miss my daughter's graduation and leave her nothing but broken bracket jeans as a parting gift? Silence tells me nothing. But then again, neither does the white noise of the world. <laughs>